I'm going to continue by um, introducing our next speaker, Alexandre Gadi, who is Professor of Modern Art History at the University of Paris uh, and Director of the uh, uh, André Châtel uh, Centre. Uh, Monsieur Gadi studied history and art history in Paris um, and uh, he has, and his uh, PhD dissertation in two, 2001 was published as uh, Jacques Le Mercier, Architecture, uh, Architect et Ingenieur du Roi. The uh, Jacques Le Mercier, architect, uh, architect and Engineer to the King in 2005. Um, he particularly works on architecture and urbanism in the 17th and 18th century uh, France and uh, in Europe, but particularly in France and even more particularly in Paris, in the history of Paris. He has been professor of art history at the Sorbonne since 2012, and he's written several books, including uh, Le Marais, guide, uh, a, uh, an historic guide, an architectural guide, Les Hôtels Particuliers, which is the subject of his talk today in 2008, and Versailles, uh, the Le Fabrique d'un chef d'oeuvre in 2011. He comes today, especially from Paris, to talk about the subject of Les Hôtels Particuliers, the uh, private mansions of Paris. So please join me in welcoming Alexandre Gadi. Thank you so much, Martin, for this kindly uh, introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a great honor for me today to be with you to celebrate the magnificent restoration of the Legion of Honor Salon Doré. I would like to thank Mr. Colin Bailey, the director of the museum, and Martin Chapman for inviting me here all the way from Paris. And I would like to ask you to please and excuse my French accent because I am today the man who don't really speak English. <laughs> this is an exciting moment for me since I am here in Francisco to talk about Parisian townhouse and that I am in a building, your museum, that is a replica of the Hotel de Salm in Paris. You can see the courtyard. If uh, if I was snob, I would sing to Thomas Jefferson because Thomas Jefferson was in Paris, you know, and in my the building of the Hotel de Salm when he was the ambassador uh, for United States of America in Paris. But I'm not snob. So today I sing to Vertigo from Alfred Hitchcock and the famous heroine Madeleine and her double, perhaps. I'm Madeleine today because I am in San Francisco and in France with your building. It's a curious sensation. Thank you so much for this sensation. <laughs> My paper is like an introduction of architectural question and problem. Perhaps everybody here, because we are in California, own a particular hotel in uh, Los Angeles or in San Francisco or Berkeley, I hope so for you. Uh, but we, we can have some explanation about the organization. In France, we have a word, distribution and architecture uh, from the famous Hotel Particulier, which is a part of the genius of Paris. And I propose you with a slide like a trip in Paris and trip in the past. Talking about Parisian townhouse is a difficult thing with so little time, I'm sorry. Uh, it's a subject that deserves hours. Defining a townhouse, called in French hôtel particulier, is in itself difficult. So let me begin with a definition. A townhouse is a symbol of power and luxury, a home for the urban elite, aristocratic and upper classes. A sign of personal or family success, this architectural type relates to the city like an ornament or public monument that was meant to stand out from its surroundings. The townhouse is meant to be seen as a vantage point to view the city. The location of Parisian townhouse in the city changes as the rich follows the rich. 
to new neighborhoods across Paris, from the area around the Louvre and Les Halles in the Middle Ages, to the Marais and the Ile Saint Louis in the 17th century, and you see a map of the Marais, the famous Plan de Turgot, to the Faubourg Saint-Germain and the Faubourg Saint-Honoré and the Chaussée d'Antin in the 18th century, the new Athens and finally the Monceau area in the 19th century. But this long migration of elegance and luxury did not affect the basic design of the townhouse, which remained dominant for six centuries. So, you have a part of the Marais. This building is today the Archive National. A painting from the Musée Carnavalet with the Ile Saint Louis and the famous Hotel Lambert, today the Hotel of the Prince of the Qatari and the Faubourg Saint-Germain with a, a, a cart, a plan of uh, 18th century, and perhaps you can recognize, follow me, your Châtillon Hotel and your Salon Doré with the garden. It was destroyed by Napoleon III for the great uh, working from Paris by Haussmann. Unlike the palaces of Florence, Roma, or Vienna, that have their main building on the street, the Parisian townhouse has always been set back from the street. Right from the beginning, the hotel was situated between courtyard and garden, a model dating back to the Middle Age, and you can see the, most, the oldest hotel in Paris, Hotel Carnavalet, which is today a museum. The narrow streets of Paris were noisy and dangerous. It's very uh, different than today. <laughs> the introduction of a courtyard created a distance between the living quarters and the street and also act as a stage of enhancing the experience of entering the townhouse. The main residence was divided, so we can have a look uh, and the Hotel de Soubise, and the seat of Archive National, one of the most important buildings of the beginning of 18th century. And uh, it's not a joke, but the residence of Prime Minister in France, uh, l'Hotel de Matignon, uh, which was built uh, in the, sous, sous la Régence. Uh, the main residence, and we can see the organization here. I lost machine. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, ah, oui, thank you so much. Uh, you can see, so, the organization with the courtyard, the street, the main building, stables and service, and the garden. It's, but perhaps you recognize the famous Hotel de Biron is today the Musée Rodin. The main residence was divided into two apartments, one for monsieur, the other for madame. Other features include the grand staircase, reception area, and private apartment. Behind the main residence, there was always a garden reached by French doors that had a parterre surrounded by trees. So it's a good example for this uh, description. And often adorned with statues, fountains, on even small pavilion at, we can see in the Hotel de Matignon today. So you have a typical plan of the 18th century hotel. You, you have an entrance in the middle with a vestibule, an Italian room introduced in France in the 17th century. The salon will take place in the center at this time and the apartment right and left. This uh, building is quite conserved in a, in a good uh, situation today. And perhaps you, you have a pleasure with the view of the desk of the Prime Minister of France on the garden of the Hotel de Matignon. It's a hard job, but a good place. <laughs> the typical parcel of land for a classic Parisian townhouse was a long rectangle. In some instance, when the parcel was more square-shaped, the layout of the courtyard, building, and garden was turned 90 degrees. And Martin shows that with the Hotel de la Tremouille. An example is the famous Hotel Lambert. You see the courtyard, but 
in front of you when you arrive, it's not the main apartment, it's a staircase. And the apartment I, in the right wing and show the, the garden. And perhaps you understand better with the, this engraving. Courtyard when the staircase is like a spectacle. And the apartment, the main apartment, I tried directly connecting by the, the garden. The great artistry of this mansion was how the interior spaces were laid out and also in their decoration to era in which the French are assured of the superiority of other countries. Perhaps it's true. <laughs> it's, it's very difficult to say it for me. The sequence of rooms follow a particular order that remain unchanged for centuries. The hall of the Middle Age that disappeared in the 18th century was followed by the antechamber. There were often two of them, and the bedroom and study, in French, cabinet, used for receiving visitors. In the 18th century, inspired by the Chateau de Volvicomte, another room was added to the Parisian townhouse, and it was on question today, the Salon, that became the main room for the distribution. Many townhouses also feature a chapel, a library, dining room, baths, uh, or a long, narrow space known as a gallery used for festivities and for exhibition of art collection. Aside from the two apartments of Monsieur and Madame, the hotel had secondary apartments for children, other members of the family, the great family of the ancien regime, extended family, and finally servants quarter. The operation of the townhouse depends of two types of service required for a certain social standing, the kitchen and the household, which were always located apart from the main living quarters in a courtyard special in the back or near the street. The typical Parisian townhouse blocked our A service in the surrounding area such as unsightly walls with things such as wings facing a courtyard or garden or a wall of trompe l'oeil decoration. The solution for this problem was developed in the 17th century when townhouses were lined up one after one, the other on one side of the street, for example, you have a, a, a map to the Marais, you see the phenomenon of uh, the hotel uh, with a, a block distribution, or grouped together to form a block. This pooling of courtyard and garden form ensemble, clearly visible of maps uh, of Turgot, etc., plan of mid 18th century. Madame de Sévigné, who lived on Rue de Torigny au Marais, said in a famous letter, she felt like she lived on an island, island of gardens, beautiful uh, uh, image. The height of Chic was to build one mansion to that it faced a street, like Monsieur de Lavrière. It's today the Hotel of the Banque de France, and you see the street still existing where the building was made by Mansart. So the entry is in, just in front of the street. The richest of the rich booked the property around their townhouses to keep the city at bay and develop these into public area. With the townhouse built of the street at the back of the courtyard, the main question then became what to build on the street. The structure at the entrance is, of course, less important than the master residence, but the entryway on the street plays the important role for creating an impression of the townhouse and indicating to possibly the rank of the inhabitants. Adorned with the family arms, allegorical sculptures, and as of the 17th century, a black marble cartouche bearing the name of the house in gold letters, it acts like a giant calling card made of stone. And you can see the portail 
from the Hotel de Soubise with the Cologne. Uh, the Theresian says the Cologne is only for the prince. It's a question of convenance, very important for the old regime. For the design of the townhouse on the street side, there were two ways to proceed. Either build a simple wall or to construct a resident building like this, the entryway and a new wing for the uh, hotel. Either solution puts the entryway in the middle while the simple wall was better for filling the courtyard with light, the residential building behind Heiter provided more privacy. An example for the first solution is the Subis Hotel in the Marais, I show you, uh, with the wall. In the second solution, illustrated by Hotel Carnavale. Under Louis XVI, a form of monumentalism was introduced with triumphal arch by Claude Nicolas Ledoux, for example, in the Hotel Duzès, with the famous portail, a critic by Blondel, because he was too pretentious to, to, with an excess of architecture. <laughs> or the Hotel de Salm, the model of your museum, and you see this engraving with an arch monumental. In the later case, complete by a colonnade through which outsiders could see into the courtyard. A revolution, a revolution sorry, occurred in the design of the Parisian town house in the 17th century with the construction of the Place des Vosges, called Place Royale. The beauty of this large, symmetrical new square was so appalling that the main building was now constructed right on the street to provide better views. The Place Vendôme, in the right bank, is another example of the square lined with handsome townhouses with main residential quarter directly on the square. The Seine was another attraction and influence the development of the Ile Saint-Louis, which offer rich home owners a magnificent panorama as seen from the Hotel de Lausanne. It today a uh, uh, study for international uh, research. For example, in the second half of the 18th century, the boulevard in the right bank attracts the interest of wealthy home owners with an unusual and lively cityscape. One still existing example is the Hotel de Montolon on the Boulevard de Poissonnière, and I show you a magnificent uh, drawings of the Cooper Hewitt Museum in New York, and a uh, design of the Hotel de Saint-Priest with a garden uh, at the first floor. Um, uh, this building was destroyed by Haussmann, this drawing uh, absolutely uh, marvelous in, in France in, in Bibliothèque Nationale. Moving the structure forward to the street required a monumental treatment to distinguish a wealthy townhouse from the more ordinary house around it. In the 17th century, the architect Le Pôtre designed an extraordinary facade for the Marais townhouse of Madame de Beauvais that still exists but much too restored by the French service of the Monument Historique in the rue de François Miron in the Marais. Made of stone instead of plaster and wood, elegant sculpture, and another uh, architectural detail. You see the citation, directly citation of the Louvre, the King Palace. Finally, in the second half of the 18th century, with the triumph of Palladian influences, the design of the Parisian townhouse went through a radical change. Now the rectangular plot of land features a villa in the middle surrounded with a garden on three sides. And we have uh, some example, the first Palladian villa from um, Soufflot for the Marquis de Marigny, destroyed in the 19th century. The only hotel from Boulay, the famous Etienne Louis Boulay, uh, still uh, uh, 
conserved in Paris, Hotel uh, Alexandre or Suchet, uh, the courtyard and the garden facade, the Hotel de Mademoiselle Guimard, it was like a temple for Terpsichore uh, by Ledoux, or l'Hôtel de Masseron with a garden still existing by Brognard, and the new property of the um, China Republic in Paris, uh, old French minister was sold two years ago, the Hotel de Montesquieu. And perhaps we can have a pleasure with another hotel uh, not very well known, destroyed by Haussmann, the Hotel de Tamnay in the uh, Chaussée d'Antin. Or the Brunois Hotel, like a temple on the Champs Elysees. Where they are located at the back of the courtyard or on the street, the townhouse was part of the urban fabric of Paris. In the 18th century, however, a kind of megalomania took over and the design of this mansion became more monumental, like the hotel from Le Doux. And you can see the famous Hotel du Zès with the cologne that Blondel uh, uh, criticized and the facade on the garden just before the destruction. It's an old photography of uh, this part of the Quartier Montmartre. The project of an hotel for the Prince of Condé, which, which is a model, the really model for Hotel de Salm and your museum, but who had never built. Or the Italian Cultural Center, Hotel de Gallifet with a colonnade like a theater or a palace or a church and the famous Hotel de Telluson with the arch, who was a, a, an, an entry for the garden and a public monument in front of a, a great street, uh, Rue d'Artois today, Rue Lafitte in the Chaussée d'Antin. And you can see the architectural uh, design, very interesting from Le Doux, unfortunately destroyed at the beginning of 19th century. Triumphal Arch served um, as an entrance to the garden and from it a view to the mansion so intriguing at this time that people booked tickets to visit it. And another hotel we says in the Faubourg uh, Saint-Germain and the new drawing, it's a, a, a drawing uh, uh, Apart in the Salon du Dessin Paris two weeks ago, uh, you can buy it if you want. Uh, <laughs> it's a, an, a view absolutely fantastic from a, a monument destroyed in 19th century. It was stables, monumental stables from the Hotel de l'Infantado. We see this monumentalization of Parisian townhouse in the example of Hotel de Salm on the left bank of the Seine. This work created a sensation and attract such notable as your Thomas Jefferson, we uh, saw that, we like to, get, to go here to sing. The main building and its rotunda, located between the courtyard and garden, like the traditional formula, could be seen from the banks of the Seine and offer a view of the foliage in the Tuileries garden on the other side of the Seine. Later, balconies and gazebos was introduced into facade design to provide more pleasing view. And you can see the joke of the uh, owner of this hotel was near the Boulevard de la Madeleine and they have a pleasure to see Paris with an instrument to, to the view. This explains why the introduction of two platforms for looking at distant view was close likely to the Parisian town house well before they became part of the architecture of modern buildings at the top. As the Parisian town house was associated with the monarchy, it survived the revolution and the change of high society in France. Never were more town houses built than in the 19th century, a true golden age and you can see uh, the famous Maison de Nana, uh, the, uh, the 
a reign of Zola, an hotel in the plain Monceau, in the style Neo Louis XV, or the style Chateau de la Loire, <laughs> with an, an amazing uh, architecture from uh, a great collector, uh, monarchist at the, at the end of 19th century. Today, it's uh, less poetic, it's the Banque de France. Many townhouses were eventually demolished, and you know that with uh, the Salon Doré. In a terrible stampede of this elegant residence, various architectural details were torn out doors, and perhaps you find funny uh, that the door entrance from the residence of the United States Ambassador in Paris, in the right bank, come to the left bank, it's a not well-known uh, construction uh, of Louis XVI, the destroyed Boulevard Saint-Germain. Various architectural details, doors, entire facades, sculpted pediments, and especially interiors. Trade in this, in this remains became a phenomenon with certain pieces being rescued for preservation, and Martin has uh, shown that. Uh, Paris is in London, and for example, the cabinet from l'Hôtel Maigret de Serrilly in the Victorian and Albert Museum. Paris is in New York with the Grand Haut Salon de l'Hôtel de Tessé in the Metropolitan Museum. And, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, Paris is, is in Los Angeles with the great uh, Salon of the Hôtel d'Austin in the Getty. The journey of the Salon Doré from the Rue Saint-Dominique to San Francisco via New York represents a long and fascinating history, a witness to the past. It has become a silent ambassador from a world that is constantly being reborn before our eyes. But we can have hesitation, and my conclusion may be, are we in Paris or in San Francisco? Thank you so much.